Hey everyone, I'm Lawrence and in this video I'm going to talk about the Blue Coats North vs South on the PlayStation 4. And this review is also valid for the Switch version, Xbox One and other platforms that have the same game. I mean on Switch you get the same as on PS4. Anyway, the Blue Coats North vs South is a remake of the 1989 or 1991 game on the Amiga. The game also had a remake prior on the PC and smartphone, and the remake is nice. Not just compared to the original version, but compared to the PC version too. In the game you play as the confederates and have to win over all forts on the map. You start the game with a set of troops, and you get one move per each troop you have. You can lose troops when you engage in battle, but don't worry, you can buy new troops with money. Each fort brings you one sack of money. For 3 sacks, you can buy a new battalion. Also the team that has the most states conquered gets one extra sack. If the enemy occupies a state on the railroad, then they attack your train. And if they get to the engine, then they win your money. But if you defend yourself, then your money remains yours. And you can do the same thing on the enemy too. If you occupy a state where your enemy's train goes, then you can attack their train. You can attack forts or enemies can attack your forts too. When you attack, you have to take down all enemies within the time limit. When you defend, you just defend your fort. Enemies drop ammo and you have to collect health packs regularly. When troops of the opposing teams are on the same state, they get to this minigame. And I found it difficult. You control three types of men. A cannon, chivalry and rifleman. And you have to guide them to win. But you can only move one of each categories at once. And they have no AI. If you leave them somewhere and the enemy attacks them, they will just stand there and die. Also it's easy to get tangled in the buttons. I found the minigame rather annoying, but I also admit that it was tense. Each battle was pretty tense. Also after a battle, the number of soldiers remaining will be kept. If you win for example but have only one soldier left, then if an enemy attacks that squadron, your one soldier will have to fight against a full army. There is also a port on the map and the team that occupies the state with the port gets reinforcements. On the map there are also Indians and Mexicans that attack from time to time and you can buy protection against those attacks. Also on the map there is a storm and if the storm hits your state with your battalion on, you can't move that battalion for that turn. But in case you eagerly want to move it, then you have to buy weather protection. Or else you wait for your next turn. Gameplay wise, on easy the game felt balanced, on medium it's tough but bearable, but on hard the game is a nightmare, I couldn't win any battle on hard. Also even if the game might look like a strategy game, the strategy is less important. Your skill on the field will assure you the win or the loss. If you don't defend or attack a fort, if you win or lose on the ground battles, that will determine the faith of the game. Strategy matters less. Content wise, there are 4 years to play and each year brings you the same map. The years are only different scenarios, not different maps. Also scenarios have a little historical context and I find this detail awesome. But the downside to the game are the loading times, which are fairly long. Overall, while the game doesn't offer much in content, it offers in gameplay. The game is repetitive if you look at what you have to do in the game, but it's intense. And playing all 4 years will take you around 4 hours to finish, maybe more, depending on the difficulty. You will do the same thing on repeat in those 4 hours, but you won't really notice it because the game is intense. As a remake, it's great. If you ever find the game ultra cheap, it's worth a shot. It's a nice game that doesn't offer much, but it's still nice to play. Also the game has a 2 player mode, something rare these days. 